and the Bahrain Institute of Banking and Finance, the BIBF. This forum aims to bring together digital transformation industry experts, professionals, and researchers to discuss and share knowledge about the exciting journey of digital, its different applications, and how everyone can take advantage of these opportunities and overcome the accompanying challenges. On behalf of the BIBF and BNH, I'm Anil Al Sorani, and I'll be your host this morning throughout the forum. Once again, we are delighted to welcome you all to this forum, and your presence really makes way for its success. We have a lineup of renowned local and international experts who will be sharing their perceptions and advice on how to reap the benefits of digital transformation and specifically how it can be utilized to elevate the customer experience. First off, please join me in welcoming the Executive Director of Financial Institution Supervision from the Central Bank of Bahrain, Mr. Abdurrahman al -Balkir. Over to you, Mr. Abdurrahman. Thank you. Uh, I hope everyone is hearing me. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It's a great pleasure for me to address this forum. Uh, uh, I would like first to commend the organizers uh, for putting together a stimulating program, uh, which will no doubt enrich the ongoing dialogue and debate on digital transformation. Uh, in insurance and the innovation in this field. I hope that uh, presentation and discussion during uh, this forum would uh, highlight uh, the uh, and debate uh, on important area of financial technology that would contribute to our further development and growth of the regional insurance services. I would also like to extend a warm welcome to the participants and the distinguished speakers for taking the time to contribute to this event. The theme of this forum is important and timely, as the insurance industry globally and specifically in the MENA region is uh, undergoing transformation due to the fact that financial technology has created a great potential for expansion for insurance services, which will further enhance the potential growth of regional insurance market. As you are aware, the Middle East uh, economies has uh, expanded at a healthy rate over the last decade and have made a significant progress in a number of sectors such as petrochemicals, infrastructure, and telecom. The insurance industry in the region has also experienced steady growth on the back of this uh, economic development, uh, improved regulatory environment, and increased awareness. Overall, the insurance premium in the MENA region has more than doubled between 2009 and 2019, with insurance premiums increasing to around 60 billion US dollars as of the end of 2019, compared to approximately 25 billion in 2009. This represents a growth of 14% per annum over uh, the period, although the growth in each market varies. Such a growth in, in uh, insurance premium is due to uh, several key demographic factors like economic growth, population expansion, as well as increasing the life expectancy, which have impacted the demand of insurance products in the region. In addition, government uh, investment in infrastructure uh, projects have also provided a new underwriting opportunities for further growth of the industry. In the GCC countries, the total premium in the uh, insurance market reached uh, 29.2 billion in 2019 as the regional government pushed to strengthen regulation, uh, introduce mandatory uh, insurance lines, and diversify their economies. For example, in the GCC countries, the healthcare uh, spending has not shown any sign of pullback. 
in spending uh, as it has been one of the primary sector in the long-term vision of GCC government. Uh, one of the major forests behind the industrial growth in recent year has been the implementation of the compulsory health insurance schemes in various jurisdictions, especially the GCC countries. Overall, the positive growth outlook in the region and the law, insu and the law insurance penetration, which is considered to be the key opportunity for future growth, will continue to attract insurers, both domestic and foreign. To invest in the MENA, uh, uh, to invest in the MENA insurance markets. As you are aware, the digitization mega trends in transforming the expectation of uh, customers across the globe. The number of users has risen from 400 million to more than 3.2 billion globally in the past 15 years, and there are now almost as many mobile phone subscription as people in the world. The base and scale of the uh, digital uh, phenomena uh, me, uh, means that insurers as well as other sectors need to reevaluate re and transform the customer experience to adapt for digital uh, connection in order to avoid lacking behind the curve. Basically, the price for effective implementation of digital uh, strategy in insurance or other sector is a greater visibility in the market, smoother and more effective customer journey, better speed to market and customer retention, ability to sell products and services, as well as a scalable and agile process, which can uh, all contribute to increase profitability and shareholders' value. A recent Ernest & Young Global Insurance Digital Survey found that the top uh, uh, drivers of insurance company uh, digital strategy were enriching the customer experience and gaining more direct control of the customer relationship. Therefore, it is clear that insurance sector is aware that adapting to customer needs and competing with nimble digital challenger is fundamental for survival. However, despite this awareness, Many in the insurance sector are still digit digitally uh, immature, with less than half of the insurers having the mobile digit digital functionality to provide a code, and only 23% able to submit and process the claims digitally. Entrenched barriers include a huge uh, investment required to uh, transform legacy technology system and internal cult uh, culture constraints are often cited as the main factors preventing digital growth in the industry. However, those uh, insurers that have already started to embarrass the uh, digital revolution are illustrating the future interface between insurers and their customers. They are moving away from periodic transactional relationship to ongoing customer interaction and engagement and helping build more effective customer trust. Generally, insurers are not naturally agile. Therefore, capacity to react to market changes in a flexible way is often restricted by the needs of count, uh, countless disparate uh, stakeholder and investment in costly legacy uh, systems. Ensuring that a digital strategy is aligned with insurer uh, strategic objective, simplification of technology, landscape, and business process, encouraging a startup culture, and empowering digital change are all essential uh, ingredients to transform a more uh, traditional insurance business. Basically, insurer that recognize and grasp the opportunity that digital can it bring to its business will be the one that successfully transform their interaction with customers and increase the market share in a digitally evolving world. As a regulator, we usually ensure that our regulatory framework accommodates the use of new technologies, which help make the delivery of financial services more robust, efficient, and inclusive. 
Therefore, the CEB has issued directives to address the financial technologies in various financial services. With, with respect to the insurance services, the CEB has issued in April 2019 the rules on insur insurance aggregators, which are uh, intermediaries with insurance brokers licensed that operate an online platform and provide price comparisons and facilitate the purchase of insurance policies from several insurance companies. The introduction of the new rules is the first step for the CBB toward insure tech, a technology-led transformation of insurance sector, which is rapidly gathering uh, uh, momentum uh, globally. Ladies and gentlemen, this brings me to the end of my remarks. All that remains for me is to issue an interesting and fruitful and productive forum and to thank you for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Abdrahman, for your insightful overview of economic drivers and strategies from a regulatory point of view in this opening speech. And now for the opening speech from Bahrain National Holding Company, BNH, the premier Bahraini insurance group for all types of insurance and risk management solutions. Please join me in welcoming the deputy CEO of BNH, Mr. Mas'ud Bader. Over to you, Mr. Mas'ud. Thank you, Ahmed. Thank you. Good morning, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Digital Transformation and Insurance, a virtual forum that is brought to you by Bahrain National Holding and Corporation with Bahrain Institute of Banking and Finance. We are honored to be with you today, and first of all, we would like to extend our sincere gratitude to the Central Bank of Bahrain for their kind patronage. We would also like to thank BIBF team for the organization of this forum. Uh, in, the fast phase, in the fast phase changing world, organization and support learning initiative becomes must in order to prepare organization and business professionals for the evolving market requirement. For the past 39 years, the BIBF has played a major role in providing an initiative learning platform to build the human capital, and we are honored to have partnered with the BIBF in the important learning initiative that aims to support the growth and development of the insurance and financial sector. This forum comes in alignment with BNH strategic direction toward digital transformation and elevating the customer experience. It is also in alignment with our corporate social responsibility to support our community and to help with knowledge sharing and bringing around a host of ideas and approaches that can help everyone. This forum includes subject matters experts, both international and regional speakers who will focus on importance of digital transformation and who, will, who we can all benefit from their experience. The forum themes is focused on elevating the customer spirit as we believe that any organiza organizational transformation should always cater to customer's need and must be aligned towards achieving customer excellence. I would like to welcome and thank all our distinguished speakers and subject matter experts who are taking part in this event and will be sharing their knowledge, experience, and useful case study that can benefit our audience today and enable them to reflect and share the knowledge in their business and organization. In our life now of innovative speakers will focus on capability building in the digital era and specifically with executive decision makers and business professionals need to know in relation to different important topics including customer excellence, leading competition, business innovation, and regulatory environment, all of which bring together a platform of knowledge and expertise to help everyone better understand digital transformation and more specifically to the insurance sector. It is really our pleasure to welcome you all in this forum, and we hope that you will take away with informed ideas that will help you improve your working environments and to help you better overcome challenges and take the opportunity of digital transformation. 
Thank you all for your attendance and wish you a great and beneficial time at the forum. Thank you, Ahmed. Thank you, Mr. Masoud, for your valuable comments today. And now we are delighted to introduce our keynote speaker, who will be addressing ways of elevating the customer experience in the age of digital transformation. Please join me in welcoming the former CEO of Lloyd's of London, an experienced insurance professional for nearly 40 years, Dame Inga Beal. Over to you, Dame Inga. Well, thank you very much. And a, a real pleasure to join you all today. Now, as the, the title of my speech and the conference theme of elevating the customer experience imply, this is a very important moment in time. An important time for all of us to consider, really and truly consider, the customer in what we do. I believe we're at a, at a crossroads now. Um, we've got technology all around us. And if we choose the right direction, we will secure the future of the insurance sector for years to come. But if we don't, and if we don't take action, our future, I believe, will be much less certain and potentially will get disrupted by someone who will come in and do something very differently. And I believe each and every one of us, whatever role we have, can influence the future here. We have the ability to, to think about how to innovate and evolve, or we can just continue doing things as, we, as we've always done. And, and that's when I worry about insurance becoming less and less relevant over time because we're not necessarily adapting as quickly as the rest of the world. And you've already heard from a couple of the introductory remarks how fast the world is changing. So I'm going to, in, in my words, I'm gonna look at two real pressing challenges that I think we need to really, that will make us really reassess what we're doing. But importantly, they may be challenges, but we then can turn them into opportunities. And I'm very much an optimist. So I'm all about thinking about, let's turn these into opportunities. So the first challenge is that one that's posed by the technology. This is changing all of our customers' worlds. It's changing our customers' business models if they're commercial customers. It's changing the risks that they all face. And of course, it's changing our own traditional business models, the business models of the actual insurers. And we've only got to sometimes just sort of think how different the world is compared with the 1970s. I started working in the early 80s. And really, just before I started work, that was when the seeds of the technological revolution were planted. When I started work, I wasn't used to working with a computer. We didn't really have computers. They, computers and sort of um, augmented reality, you know, um, driverless cars, tablet computers, video calls even. To me, those existed only in classic cult films like 2001, A Space Odyssey or Star Trek. And yet today we take many of these things for granted. And I now have an Apple Watch and I can make phone calls from it. I can pay for my groceries with it. I can send texts and emails. I could follow directions on a map. And that's similar to the scene I remember watching on Star Trek back then. And I would never have imagined that I would have had such an intelligent device on my wrist in any time in my life. But there you go. The world is changing rapidly. And of course, the business world has changed beyond recognition, where 40 years ago, the value of the largest companies listed on the US stock markets were represented by tangible assets. And these are the things that we were used to ensuring physical facilities and plants and machinery. And yet today, the company's assets, those some of the most wealthy or um, largest cap by capitalization are those with intangible assets of data, software, digital platforms, things that we find very difficult to, to get our arms around. And if we look at today at some of those most successful companies, whether it's Skype, whether it's Airbnb, Uber, they don't own 
assets. They are, they're existing, if you like, in the ether. And these changes are having a profound impact on the entire world we live in, and particularly on the risk landscape. And they're providing all sorts of new risks. So a cyber attack these days can cripple a health service, can knock out transport infrastructure, put down or out of business a bank or a shipping company. And so we need to really think differently about the insurance product we're offering. And over the next century, who knows what we'll see? The colonization of Mars, perhaps, commercial space flights are already there, almost a reality. We're gonna be having perhaps flying autonomous cars. We're already seeing drone taxis. Who knows what we will see in the future? And it may not be in my lifetime, but it's certainly going to be in the next generation's lifetime. So the world is getting more complex and the risks are changing and customers are demanding that the insurance that we're offering is adapting to the changing world. So there is real pressure on insurers to keep innovating. And my view is that we perhaps aren't keeping up with this demand. When I was still at Lloyd's, we did a survey, a survey of businesses, and only one and a half percent of businesses surveyed thought innovation in financial services, which included insurance, was better than in other sectors. More than half thought financial services was worse than most other sectors. So to me, there's a real innovation gap, a gap between the products that we're offering and the way that we're delivering them and the risks that people are encountering and therefore the products that they need to buy and the way they want to buy it. So it's a gap that we all need to work on closing. So technology is disrupting business models. It's delivering products and services also at lower cost. So insurance companies, we're always looking at ways to think about how we can reduce costs and selling directly to customers. That is actually having a huge impact on people's cost base. These price comparison websites are coming up with a competitive market, the likes of which perhaps some of us had not seen before. And then we're also able to have data and, and use algorithms to fine tune those products, fine tune that pricing. And of course, risk is also being commoditized and packaged up and sold in a different way at the sort of back end. So there's there's new capital, there's new markets actually wanting to encroach in on the traditional insurance value chain. And if we're not careful, some underwriters, some insurers are going to be cut out of that value chain completely. But of course, technology for others is opening up new opportunities. And those who are able to use that data and really analyze it and use it to focus on the customer and think about packaging something up for the customer, to me, they're gonna be the winners in the future. And the thing is the established players can really struggle with this. Again, we, we heard earlier about legacy systems holding us back and new entrants are coming in with no legacy. They don't have the costs, the high costs that some of the incumbents have. So this competition is getting hotter. And I really want the insurance sector, seeing as I have worked nearly 40 years in insurance, I want to make sure that we do embrace all of this new digitalization and new technologies. Now, I retired from Lloyd's of London at the end of 2018. So now I have a portfolio of non-executive roles. So I'm not in the... The cut, you know, the cut and thrust of everyday executive life. But what was interesting for me, I then started to have a new experience when I retired, a new customer experience. I set up my own small consultancy business so that I could be doing, doing advisory services and things like that. And as a newly formed business, I had to set up a bank account, a business bank account. I had to establish a website and do a lot of other administration connected with what you do when you have to set up a business. Now, this was a bit of a wake up call because having been in 
senior leadership roles for decades, I just haven't had to deal with these sorts of administrative things for many years, the sorts of things that our customers are dealing with all of the time when they interact with us. Now, this wasn't an insurance an example, an insurance example, but this is a banking example. Now, rather than go to my existing bank to open up my new bank account, I decided instead to try one of the new digital only banks, one that has no physical branches at all, no ATMs, no way of getting cash out, no means of paying in checks or dealing in paper in any way whatsoever. Now, I have to say it was one of the smoothest of experiences. The entire application all done via my mobile phone and using the camera to identify me using my ID, in this case, it was my driving license, I didn't sign a single piece of paper. But it was smooth and simple. And the entire process had been built around me, the customer, or of course, the potential customer. And not only was the initial process very smooth, but the functionality of the app on my phone is very easy to use. I had online mobile banking with my existing bank, but there's a huge contrast between using the two apps, my existing bank and then my new one. The new startup digital bank has a fresh approach to what you're seeing and how you use the app. My other bank has converted the traditional way of using banking into a mobile app and it's a very different experience and one of the things that I learned at Lloyd's when we were modernizing Lloyd's was that's what we tended to do a lot of the time we were a traditional insurance insurance setup we started to digitalize the old way of doing things which isn't necessarily what the new challenges are doing so challenging your own existing business model to ensure that the customer is really at the heart of what you do can be difficult, particularly when we have and we work in organizations that have been around for a while. It's so much easier for a player like this startup digital bank to start from scratch. No legacy systems to worry about, no ingrained behaviors to try to change. Now, when I started at Lloyd's, the biggest challenge I took on was to modernize the market, to move the market from paper-based processing to a digitalized world. And interestingly, it wasn't the technology itself that was the biggest hurdle. It was the resistance of the people. I was threatening the very core of how they worked. I was wanting to change the way they behaved at work. So talking about behaviors brings me on to the second big challenge I want to mention today that goes hand in hand when introducing technology. It's the competition for talent. Because modern dynamic tech driven companies are great, but not if you don't have the right employees, the right people to implement them. And what I found when I was looking around the Lloyd's market that we didn't have and we weren't attracting tech savvy people. We weren't attracting the next generation. And many of the reports I look at, many of the statistics in markets around the world show that we have an aging work, working population in the world of insurance. So if we're not careful, the technology might be out there, but we may not have the people, we may not be attracting the young people to come and want to join insurance. The next gen of talent, they expect to work in modern environments. And these might well be different to the ones that we've been used to working in. They want a different work-life balance. They want to work for companies with a real purpose at their core. They want to work for companies that are doing the right thing for the environment, that are doing the right thing for societies at large. They also want to progress quickly and fairly using their qualifications and skills. And that's not necessarily the insurance world that many of us recognize, the insurance world that I grew up in. Now, the other thing is this technology hardly matches the technology that the next generation is actually used to using in their personal life. They are tech 
savvy. And we need to make sure that our environments are seen as dynamic and modern enough and using technology to encourage the right people to come and join us, to make sure that our sector stays vibrant and relevant for the future. And one of the things that we had to think about when I was at Lloyd's was thinking about what training are we giving? What are the apprenticeship courses that we're putting on? Are we really providing the skills that are needed in the future? I was also at some time part of the Chartered Insurance Institute. I've been a member for many, many years and I, I did my training and I got all my qualifications in the 80s. But when I was on the board of the, the Chartered Insurance Institute, we had to really think about the curriculum that we were delivering. Were we really being modern enough in the topics that we were addressing? Were we really introducing technology? Or were we still stuck in the past, about the past that we were all used to, the past of learning about different classes of business and the type of insurance that we needed to offer? We need to make sure that we're offering training on artificial intelligence. People need to understand about robots and data analytics. So we really need to think about, as a whole sector, are we reacting quickly enough to the challenges of technology and talent? So what do we need to do? Now, in my view, there are four things that we should do. We, we need to adopt the new technology. We need to adapt our business models. We need to close that innovation gap and attract and retain new talent. So let's think about the technology to start with. And I'm going to use Lloyd's as an example here. Now, before I go into the modernization of Lloyd's, I need to explain just a little bit about how it works. It's, some of you may be very familiar with it, but it's a marketplace. And it has many, many, many stakeholders. And I've never worked in an organization before with so many stakeholders to bring along with you. There are all sorts of distinct groups. Some of them are the employees, the employees of the Central Corporation of Lloyd's. There are about a thousand strong people. Then there are the overall players in the market, hundreds of individual businesses and broking firms. Some of them small entrepreneurs, some of them parts of mega global insurance companies. And they're all trading with each other. And then of course you have the actual customers of the market who might be big businesses um, and they might be individuals like pop stars and footballers who want to ensure their voices or their precious legs with Lloyd's. But all of that business was being traded and contracted on paper. And it meant it was incredibly inefficient with multiple upon multiple of reeking data because the syndication of the risks was happening because a lot of the risks are very large. So you might have had 30 individual syndicates or insurers participating on an individual risk and each one keying data into their own individual systems. And I wonder how many of us are working in organizations where we're re-keying in data into the various systems that we have. So the big ask for me as the CEO was to introduce technology, to replace that paper, to think about how we can have data entered only once in the process and never entered again. And the important thing was it was a face-to-face -face trading environment in the city of London. So about 8,000 people meeting physically each day, negotiating face-to-face. And, and the task was to digitize the London and Lloyd's insurance markets, but not close it. So keep that physical environment together. So no crisis, if you like, no ability to close it down and force people to do things differently. And that was the challenge about coming up with new ways of working and bringing people along with you so that everything is done electronically. There is an electronic platform, paper, is eliminated. And that was the challenge. Understanding why they felt so threatened. We had to be really creative in order to bring people along with us. Some of it was about introducing financial incentives and, and some penalties. But importantly for me, the key aspect 
was including the people in the future. And when I arrived at Lloyd's, over decades, there had been failed attempts to digitalize the market. And when I started to talk to people and understand why this had failed, it was all about the people themselves feeling threatened, feeling excluded, not understanding how it was going to benefit them. So we included people in designing their own future. Now, some of you may think, how on earth can you take time to do that? How can you, can you, how can you include all your people? Well, I can tell you it was an investment that was worth doing because while it takes some extra time at the beginning, once you've got them on board, you very much have them converted and tackling those different ways of working and tackling those resistant behaviors is much better. So we also needed to think about how the whole business model will change. We had to think about driving costs out because it's a very competitive market. We had to make deep changes into how we were analyzing and how we were building systems and how we were thinking about surrounding customers by an, 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 a complete service. And insurers, again, are not so good at doing this. If I think about some of the largest companies in the world, in fact, seven of the 10 largest companies by market cap in the world are building ecosystems around their customers, whether it's Alibaba, Alphabet, Amazon, Apple, Facebook, Microsoft, Tencent, they're all building ecosystems and they are being very, very successful. And insurers are not very good at necessarily building ecosystems. Our business models are not built around the customer. Generally, we build our business models according to the way we view business, we think about how we want to segment and perhaps according to our actuarial models, we put people in certain buckets. We don't think about the buyers of insurance. We don't think about their needs and how they want to buy. So we don't surround them by an ecosystem of services. I do know though of one insurer, a Chinese insurer, Ping An, who's been very, very successful at this. They started out as an insurer, but now they're offering healthcare consultations. They've got doctors signed up. They, they sell cars. They, they do real estate listings. They do banking services. They've got hundreds of millions of online customers. And all of this started from some core insurance services. And that has helped them to become one of the world's most valuable insurance brands. So when we think about that sort of closing the innovation gap, we've really got to think differently about how we approach the market, what we do and build things around the customer. Now, I talked about my online banking experience of setting up my, my new bank my new business bank account. Now what's happening in other parts of the world, we might be in mature markets and I've certainly worked in very mature insurance markets, but what's happening in the insure tech space, what these new companies are doing, of course, is they're building insurance that they're selling over mobile phones. Now who would have thought you could have fitted a healthcare policy on a mobile device? Who would have thought about it? But this is what's happening. This is what's happening in many of the countries in Africa. Everything is being sold just on a mobile device. So we've really got to think differently about what we're doing around innovation and sometimes not start from where we are coming from, not start from the incumbent's viewpoint, but get the new talent in and have real um, groundbreaking thoughts about how we can deliver a different product. So when we do think about this talent, which is that, that sort of fourth thing we've got to tackle, how are we going to do that? How are we going to encourage people to want to join us? We've got to think about being dynamic. We've got to have a wonderful modern image of insurance. One of the things we did when I was part of the Chartered Insurance Institute was to go into schools and universities and, 
and really tell people about the purpose of insurance because we do an amazing thing for society at large. We keep the world going. But very few people, very few students are actually aware of insurance. They don't think of insurance as being so critical to the world. And I'm a firm believer that we should go out there and do a much better job of encouraging the young generation to get excited about insurance. And there's also something to be said about making the insurance profession very, very professional. I was impressed when I was speaking to many of the younger talent in insurance that they see the professionalization of insurance as very, very important. As individuals, they want to be recognized as having really achieved something. So they want to see a qualification in insurance as something really aspirational. And then there are, so that means professional bodies like the Chartered Insurance Institute or the professional bodies such as the BIBF can help guide through what we need to do in these challenging times. We need to make our sector more appealing if we want to attract the best. And that means getting diversity in there, looking um, and appealing to different types of people, not just getting gender diversity, but all types of different sorts of diversity. Because there's lots of research to show that the most successful companies in the world are those that are having diverse thought around the table, having different voices. And I'm a firm believer that if the insurance sector really wants to be successful in the future, we've got to do that. We've got to bring different voices around the table. Those who will tell us about how we need to adjust our products, how we need to change to really be fit for the future. Now, this is not an easy thing to do. I'm not say, standing here saying it was easy. The five year journey at Lloyd's to introduce technology was not an easy task, but it's well worth doing. And I'm a firm believer that if you put the customer at the heart of the company and you build something around the customer, you can be a winner in the long run. And I'm sure all of you here today care about the insurance sector. Like me, it's been my entire professional life. And I know that the positive impact insurance has on the world is, means it's just too important for us to be disrupted and have someone else take away that special thing. So we mustn't fail, we must take action. And some of that means making some tough decisions. Decisions that might cause some short-term challenges, but ones that will deliver long-term benefits. So let's think all together about how we can change, how we can modernize, deliver what the customer wants and hire some of the, the best talent into the insurance. And then I know that we'll secure the future for many generations to come. So thank you very much for listening today. And I now very much look forward to joining the panel discussion and having some, some questions from the audience. Thank you.